more kind of lysosomal enzyme targeting and unique ways to deliver lysosomal enzyme to a lysosome, which might have, I think, uh, if I understand correctly, uh, future use for uh, enzymes identified for bioremediation uh, to deliver those enzymes to the lysosome. So what I'm going to talk about today are new strategies for enzyme therapy for lysosomal storage diseases. <laughs> Lysosomes are normally synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum where they receive their core glycosylation. And as they travel through the Golgi apparatus, they pick up the nano-6-phosphate recognition signal that as they get to the trans-Golgi network, uh, they are sequestered from the, the normal secretory pathway by binding to the nano-6-phosphate receptor delivered by vesicular transport to the lysosome. Fortunately for us, about 10% of the nano-6-phosphate receptor is located on the cell surface and um, binds to that receptor and it's endocytosed and uh, delivered to the lysosome. And this is uh, this binds enzyme, whether it's in the uh, media of a cell culture or from the blood after it's been infused. Uh, phosphorylation of the mannose residues on lysosomal enzyme oligosaccharides is a two-step process. Uh, the first step is uh, catalyzed by the phosphotransferase that uh, transfers the lignac phosphate from the EP lignac onto the, man, uh, the sixth position of the mannose of the oligosaccharide on the lysosomal enzyme. The second step is uh, catalyzed by phosphodiesterase, which removes the glucnac, exposing the mannose phosphate recognition site on the enzyme. Uh, the lysosome is a degradative organelle. It's filled with a whole series of enzymes that uh, degrade things. Um, all of these enzymes have a, an acid pH optima, so the pH of the lysosome is actually maintained uh, around pH 5 by a proton pump. Um, what happens if you're deficient in the lysosomal enzyme? Uh, you get a lysosomal storage disease. So you get the progressive accumulation of storage, which you can see the, uh, swells and distends the lysosomes to the point where they um, uh, cause cellular uh, dysfunction and, uh, and eventually uh, disease. Uh, this is a partial list of the human lysosomal storage diseases and the enzymes that are deficient in those diseases. Our lab uh, concentrates mainly on the mucopolysaccharidoses, MPS1 through MPS7, also known as Fly syndrome, which is caused by the deficiency of beta glucuronidase. Um, the MPS enzymes are uh, responsible for uh, breaking down the mucopolysaccharides, also known as the glycosamine glycans or GAGs. Uh, GAGs are sequentially degraded by a series of lysosomal enzymes. The deficiency of any one of those, um, it's a sequential degradation, the deficiency of any one of those stops the degradation and causes the accumulation of the remaining GAG. Uh, this is the first patient described with uh, beta glucuronidase deficiency, MPS7, also known as slide disease. Has a typical uh, uh, phenotype of the storage disease with a broad, flattened face sheets, uh, an enlarged liver and spleen, and joint and uh, bone problems. About 15 years after this patient was described at Birkenmeyer Jackson Laboratory, uh, came upon a spontaneous mutation in a mouse which has turned out to be the MPS7 mouse deficient in beta glucuronidase. It pretty much recapitulates almost all of the phenotype that's seen in the patient, but it's very well easily characterized by this short, flattened, flattened nose. Um, the MPS7 mouse, uh, because it was so widely uh, or so uh, early, or available so early, came widely used to study experimental approaches to therapy for LSDs, uh, such as enzyme replacement therapy, gene therapy, and bone marrow transplantation. The first um, alternate strategy I'm going to talk about is what we call our gilt tag gus. We know that some lysosomal enzymes are poorly modified with mannose 6-phosphate, and some enzymes can be rapidly cleared by mannose receptors with a, even a poor dis, uh, tissue distribution. So we developed an alternate delivery approach by fusing, fusing a portion of the IGF-2 peptide to the carboxy terminus of H gus. This enzyme was designated HGUS GILT, the GILT standing for glycosylation independent lysosomal targeting. Uh, the GILT tag is derived from insulin like growth factor 2 or IGF2. The mannose 6 phosphate receptor is a bifunctional receptor that bind, has domains that bind the, the mannose 6 phosphate on the oligosaccharides of lysosomal enzymes, but in addition, it has a, a domain that binds um, IGF2. 
Um, it binds both of these ligands and into cytosis them and delivers them both to the lysosome. The lysosome enzymes for function and IGF2 for degradation. Uh, yield targeting was studied using three different forms of the enzyme. The first form is the wild type H plus with a normal man 6 p component. The second form was um, with the, the H gus guild with the addition of the guild tag. The third form was a deglycosylated form of H gus guild in which we used endoglycosylase F1 to remove the mannose 6 phosphate, leaving only the guild tag. We first looked at these enzymes, uh, an in vitro uptake by human MPS7 fibroblasts. And you can see in the first set of bars that uh, HGUS is taken up very well by these cells and the uptake is completely inhibited by mannose 6-phosphate. However, there's only a partial inhibition by IGF-2, which is mainly by a steric inhibition, not with direct competition with mannose 6 binding site. HGUS guilt, however, is taken up a little better than the wild-type enzyme, but now that uptake is not uh, uh, inhibited by mannose 6-phosphate very much at all, but it's more completely inhibited by HGUS guilt. However, in the HGUS guild plus F1, it only has the guild tag. It's taken on almost as well as the wild type enzyme, but now it's not inhibited by mannose 6 phosphate at all, but it's completely inhibited by um, uh, IGF2. So, GUS guild can be taken up by the man 6 p IGF2 receptor utilizing the guild tag. We next looked at the biodistribution of these three enzymes. Uh, by giving MPS7 mice one mg per kg, one dose at one mg per kg uh, IV injection. After 24 hours, the tissues were evaluated for HGUS activity. Um, and here we're looking at the heart, kidney, and lung. And you can see in the yellow bars the low level of endogenous activity in these tissues. But if we, uh, if, if we infuse with wild type dust, we get uh, a, a substantial delivery of enzyme to the tissue. Um, Gus guilt actually in these three tissues gives us a higher level of enzyme at the same dose. Um, and uh, Gus guilt uh, treated with Indo F1 um, gives us almost the same uptake as the wild type enzyme. And uh, this is being mediated only by the guilt tag and not by the N6B tag. And we also found that Gus guilt was delivered at least as well as H Gus in all other tissues that we tested. Um, is there value added by guilt? We compared the effectiveness of the clearance of storage by HGUS or HGUS guilt at a dose of one mg per kg. Six week old mice were infused with enzyme leaflets for three weeks, and the mice were sacrificed seven days late after the last infusion, and the tissues were analyzed for clearance of storage by histochemistry. Here you can see uh, images from the liver, bone, and the kidney of untreated HGUS and HGUS guilt treated uh, animals. Here you see abundant uh, storage in the liver, uh, but in both the HGUS and the GUS guilt treated uh, livers, um, uh, the, the storage is completely reversed. Now the liver is easy to clear for storage, so we expected that. In tissues like the bone, where there's abundant storage in the osteoblast, treatment with HGUS does not reduce that storage very well. The treatment with GUS guilt wound up completely reversing it, or almost completely reversing the storage. And the same in the kidney, which is also somewhat refractive to treatment. There's abundant um, uh, storage in the podocytes, and it's kind of hard to see here, but that's still present with treatment with HGUS. But with treatment with HGUS guilt, um, we see almost complete reversal of that. There's still some storage in other parts of, this, of the kidney, but, um, uh, but uh, there's reversal of a lot of the storage. So the conclusions from guilt is that guilt targeting could be important for enzymes that are poorly phosphorylated in mammalian cells, for example, pompase. Uh, guilt targeting could be helpful in diseases where enhanced enzyme delivery to some cell types is advantageous, such as the osteoblasts and hepatocytes of glomeruli. Um, guilt targeting could potentially be used to deliver non-lysosomal proteins to the lysosome, for example, enzymes identified to be useful for <coughs> remediation. I'm next going to talk about the use of the HIV TAP peptide to enhance delivery of HGUS. Um, TAD is the positively charged 11 amino acid uh, protein transduction motif from the HIV TAP protein. Uh, TAP tag proteins bind to negatively charged proteoglycans on the cell surface, which mediate their uptake by absorptive endocytosis. 